Hello, my loves, and welcome back to Bahati Life YouTube channel. If we're meeting for the first time, welcome. And for those of you that are old friends and family, welcome back. As you guys can see, we're going to be diving into the week ahead. I'm going to be pulling the chart up for you in this way so that you can follow along making sure that the date and the time is correct. At the time of me recording, it's October 28th, 2024, 2.27 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. I have the chart pulled up for 1.53 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because that's how I pull the charts when I'm reading for the collective. Please ignore the ads on the bottom <laughs> of this um, of this chart reading. How are you guys doing? It is Hall Halloween weekend or Halloween week. It's gonna be a long one. It's a little weird though. I don't know if you guys are feeling and sensing what I'm feeling. I don't think that there's anything necessarily bad, but it just doesn't feel like Halloween lately. I don't know if it's my circumstances and my life changes that, or the fact that I live in Florida and <laughs> it's high key beautiful out here. It's still warm, um, but yeah. I don't know if you guys are feeling this too as well. Anyway, let's go ahead and dive in. There's a lot that we need to talk about and I don't wanna waste a second of your time. First things first, I want to talk about the fact that the sun is currently transiting through the sign of Scorpio. We are in Scorpio season and Mercury is transiting through the sign of Scorpio. Not only is the sun and Mercury transiting through the sign of Scorpio, but we also have starting this week, the moon transiting through the sign of Virgo. Now I was just talking to my friends, the small collective with Bahati Love Notes, which is something similar to like a Patreon where I'm shuffling for them every every week throughout the month. I was just talking to them about how there's this energy here about like the word deception has been coming through. And Scorpio oftentimes gets a really bad reputation for like having secrets and um, hiding things. It's not intentionally trying to hide things or to make things un intense or uncomfortable. It's just that it's a sign that loves to go deep. It loves to be intimate and intimacy, true intimacy is not something that needs to be shared with everyone and everything. With this, this little start to this week with the sun transiting in such a highly emotional, very um, intuitively like have depth sign, and Mercury ruling our minds and how we're thinking and how we need to be communicating or how we're encouraged to communicate and the, the moon and the final degrees of Virgo, there's something here that we are picking up on. It doesn't necessarily need to be that we are being deceived by something or someone else or something is about to be revealed. It could be a really strong sign that it's time for you to really start this week tuning in and tapping into where your energy is at and how you're feeling. Our physical bodies are constantly sending us signs and signals when something feels right, when something is right for us, or when something is wrong. What's right or wrong doesn't necessarily need to be by the book. It's when you sit with yourself and your energy or your aura changes, does that change reflect something that is healthy, positive, construct constructive, and moving with integrity to who you are? or does it compromise who and what you've got going on? Also, pay attention to what you are allocating and giving your energy to, meaning when you say yes to something or if someone asks you for a favor, when someone asks you to do something or when something pops up and you say yes to it, do you really authentically, truly, genuinely want to say yes or are you saying yes out of a sense of obligation or duty. I did dive into this message very, very deep or d way more deeper than how we're going here with Bahati Love Notes. So if that's something that you wanna tap into and if that's something that resonates with you, then you could definitely look into that. However, let's continue, let's push forward. The next thing that I am like seeing is this really beautiful trine. A trine is when three planets are their energies merge together easily and effortlessly that they create like a window where something can be born, where something can enter. This is something that is encouraged and something that oftentimes feels easy and effortless just because these energies have all aligned to say, come in, you're welcome, like come in. You know, um, the other times it can make us feel complacent and lazy and not give us enough zest and fire to make change within our lives because we're so so comfortable 
what I really like is that we have this trine, but we also have enough planets right, right now at the bottom, the base of this, of our chart, Saturn retrograde right here, Neptune retrograde, Chiron retrograde, Uranus retrograde, Jupiter retrograde, that are creating enough tension and enough self-reflection and awareness, right? Really, if we're not aware, we're, we're being encouraged to become aware of our boundaries, of our intuition, of our healing, of our, our wounds, of changes, of disruption in our lives, of our, our growth, of the lessons. There's all of this information coming through, right? That has to do with authenticity, your integrity, standing up for yourself, understanding yourself, taking time for yourself, whatever that looks like for you now, especially when it comes to your emotional well-being and your intuitive well-being. This means that you have learned enough, especially with these retrogrades, you have learned enough and you're revisiting those lessons, right, of boundaries, of who you are, or developing a sense of identity of who you are um, even further than you already have, right? So this means that a lot of you guys have broken free of toxic patterns, toxic relationships. A lot of you guys are saying goodbye, literally saying goodbye, Pluto in the final degrees of Capricorn, to a past version of yourself. You have evolved so much. And now that you have evolved and there's no turning back, there's no looking back with Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, Uranus, and Jupiter, this is a wonderful opportunity for you to sit with yourself and not to rehash those wounds or sit with them and linger in them any further than needs to be, but honor them and start to reshape yourself. Start to ask yourself questions. Who am I now? This is not something that needs to be directly answered, like a clear out, flat out answer. So many of you guys are, are transitioning right now, transforming into new versions of yourself. And who you are isn't going to be this quick, easy answer or something that is easily defined. Your relationships and what the future holds is something that seems like a big question mark or this big open trine of something coming through or something entering into your life that you may not necessarily know what's going to happen next or be able to plan and predict it, especially when we have these planets that rule our our ability to feel secure and stable being retrograde or in, in positions that are really tense and uncomfortable, really challenging us to trust the plan and trust the path, whatever that looks like. We're not, we, do, we don't want to have an expectation that we know what's going to happen or that we can plan for things to happen because there's so much change afoot. Like not only are we changing, but circumstances around us, our life, our jobs, our our luck, our opportunities, our resources, they're changing. They've changed. Our relationships have changed. Things that we thought were going to be forever, it's changed. So there's this need to kind of go with the flow. And with that, this is where this trine that I'm seeing at the start of this week, really listening to your body. Remember I was telling you guys, listening to your body and how your energy ebbs and flows. This is your opportunity this week to start off by saying, you know what, this doesn't make me feel good. I had a, loyal a loyalty to this. I did make a promise to this. I did say that I was gonna do this. Now I, I, I have, my loyalty isn't really defined by these rules and sense of duty and obligation that I once held. I have to, you have to give me a little bit of space to change and pivot just like I would give you the space to you know to change and pivot right so there's a lot of freedom here because none of us are set in stone if you find that there is someone or something or your own expectations that are like this is the way that it is it's set in stone it's concrete it can't change it doesn't move you're gonna find that that part of yourself or that part of your relationship or that part of your life is going to come crumbling, crashing down because it was going to regardless. This isn't a reflection of failure. This isn't a sign that you've done something wrong. It's a sign that you are actually moving in alignment with these planets. This is what they're meant to be doing right now. It's in your best interest to go along with it. Having said that, what also is in your best interest is the fact that North Node is transiting through the sign of Aries. This is not new. This is not new. And the vertex point is transiting through the sign of Virgo. What this is telling me and what this is telling you and what this is encouraging you 
to do and feel is regardless of what you are facing, regardless of what it looks like, meaning like life or challenge or whatever it is that might be intimidating you or this blank slate that is literally opening up the door, this portal here, whatever it is, it's really important that you begin to speak life into yourself that with Aries, with Aries um, North Node, that you are authentically showing up as someone who is courageous, who's bold, who may look at the future or starting a new future, starting a new path because Aries is the first of the zodiac signs. Um, this is where we need to be focusing on. This is where we need to keep our eyes locked on is this new beginning, this new chapter. This is where we ne we can't necessarily go back to the past. Even though we have Saturn, Neptune, Chiron, Uranus, and Jupiter retrograde, they're retrograde, yes, meaning that they like to retrace their steps. We're not going back to the past. We're actually supposed to be setting our sights for the future. And we're also not supposed to be perfecting, but becoming more diligent and strategic and discerning and discriminating about what we allow into our life in this present moment, including including the energy that we bring, the energy that you bring. This is why sun, this is so beautiful. This is why the sun and Mercury transiting through Scorpio is such a blessing to us right now. And then we're shortly about to have a new moon in the sign of Scorpio, November 1st at 8.47 a.m. Eastern Standard Time, right? This is why it's such a blessing because this starts this new chapter, this fresh, this really fresh start, this new beginning, right? That we can call in, that you can call in, that is authentic, that has depth, that has realness, there is no fake, fake fallacy, falsehoods that we're carrying into this new chapter in our lives. It is authentic. It is real. It is raw. It is solid. It has depth. This is not something to be fearful of. It's something to dive into. For those of you guys that don't like to dive into your emotions or you're steer, you, you notoriously steer clear of it or you keep yourself busy so you don't have to see, hear, sense anything, I want to tell you that sometimes we do that because we get overwhelmed by the growth and what's expected of us and we just want to have fun, right? We just want to have fun. We want to explore. Life is short. I want to tell you that when you hear the word depth, when we, we hear the word intimacy, when we hear the word connection and realness and rawness, it doesn't also come with heaviness. It doesn't mean that you're going to get trapped in this pattern of needing to heal, right? And needing to do this work. It just means that you become the clearest, purest, authentic version of yourself, whatever it is that that looks like. And that becomes something, someone that you love. You may have been operating for quite some time on expectations, on obligations, on shadow, um, shadow, shadow truth that we hold on, you know, things that we were taught in childhood. You've already started doing the work, whether you invited it in or whether the universe brought it in. You've been doing the work. Most of you guys, if you're on my YouTube channel, you've been doing the work. Believe me. Um, the shadow work and healing yourself, or at least asking the questions, right? Or at least being presented with people. Because when you start entering into communities like this, you don't really get to hide away from yourself. You don't really get to hide away from synchronicity and alignment. It finds you. <laughs> I don't know if you've noticed that, but it finds you. Your vibe attracts your tribe, or when you start to get a little whiff, or it starts to get on you, you know? Um you know, this uh, high, like high vibration or real, this real vibration, you know what I mean? Like a real aura, like real realness. It, it, it tends to pour out into all the different areas of our lives. So if this means that you are learning that, okay, the work that I was doing that I just quit from or that I just moved away from, it is not in alignment with who I am. I, it was so important to me in the past but it was important to me in the past because I felt like I had something to prove of myself. This is where that door, that portal starts to open up and says, we heard you. And there's a new opening, a new awakening that you're going to be walking through, that you're going to be birthing yourself through that starts a new chapter that's going to be more real, more raw and more in alignment with who you are because you are not that shell of yourself that you once were. Same thing with relationships. You could have been in a marriage, a union, or you could have been chasing a certain type of person that you have realized 
that was a broken part of myself. I have no shame in my game. It is what it is. But we are not repeat, repeating the, the mistakes and the patterns of the past. I've lived. I've learned. I'm opening myself up. And for that reason, you get something better. You get something that has more depth, more intimacy, and you actually have more fun with that person. You actually have more joy and more beautiful moments with that person because you guys are so in alignment. You're so in alignment. The other thing, it could be purpose. I mean, I could go down the list of all the different ways that this can show up. But essentially what is it I'm saying is like the old you has been ushered out and really has been ushered out. You know when we say like we're ending, we're transforming, it's like the butterfly. For so many of you guys, you are the butterfly that's drying your wings. You're not breaking out of the cocoon. You've already done that. Your wings are dried or they're almost dried completely. And you're at the, the precipice. You're at the line of this new chapter, this new transition. So again, you don't have to have the answers and you don't need to have the flight path and the plan of where it is that you're going to go when you spread your wings. You know that you're leaving. You know that there's something afoot. You know that there's something ahead of you that, you know, um, that is like on the horizon or that you're like hours away from embracing or a day away from embracing with this new moon in Scorpio. Um, the other thing that I want to say here is um, really be careful because although we have this invitation to be open to these energies, we also have an opportunity to be challenged and to be gripped up by our vices or by people, things that are distraction or trying to assert their power, hold on to their power. They're not open. They're not letting go of their grip. They're sinking their teeth into you um, or what they, how things used to be. I'm seeing this. I can't help but to see this in government and politics and business and how the abuse of power. We've been, I've been talking about this a lot on my YouTube channel, but I can't help but to see this in those areas that I just mentioned. Why is this happening? Because we have sun transiting through Scorpio. Still the ego. The ego is so locked into power, control, um, manipulation, submissiveness, trying to protect that aspect of you're beneath me, I'm above you, this is how I keep you beneath me. You know, those types of energies can be really, really problematic. And we're definitely seeing them in the news in so many different ways. The It goes so deep. Like the hole that you can fall down with this, with the truth, goes so deep. When it comes to music industry, right, it's like, I'm just going to just make a little comment about this. With the whole, like, I don't want to drop names or anything like that. But um, you guys know what I'm talking about. It's not just the music industry. It branches out into huge business, banking, institutions, um, politics, not just in the United States, but globally, um, big, big, big spending, you'd be surprised the web that is woven. And that is why it took so fucking long for these energies to be revealed, to be called out, to be questioned, to be jailed, to be locked up, to be put on trial, because there it is so interwoven. And it has been the fabric, the fibers of people in positions of power for way too long. Don't get me started, right? So look at this. We have the sun transiting through Scorpio, still trying to hold on to its power. And in a square, in the final degrees of Saturn, I'm sorry, in the final degrees of Capricorn, ruled by Saturn, Saturn retrograde right now, all of those things are coming, tumbling out of the closet. Pluto is in the final fucking degree, pardon my French. This means that everything that Pluto has been working to push out like pump out like a pimple squeeze out this toxins is starting to come to a head before it finally moves into again the sign of Aquarius and it's going to linger a little bit longer than it normally does because Saturn is currently retrograde still in the sign of Pisces there's a lot of secrets that are still and a lot of uh truth that goes really 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 deep um that has been hidden for quite some time like no eyes have been on it. Very, very much secrets. The vibe has been off for, this is like generations, right? So Saturn retrograde is going to prolong this energy a little bit long further. 
than just this Pluto transit through Capricorn and Pluto's entry back into Aquarius. So just FYI. Um, so we're going to keep seeing that. It's going to be long, 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 long time. But long enough. Um, yeah. So not only are we going to see this in politics and government and business and on the news, we're going to start seeing the web. And even what we see, it goes deeper than that. I say all this to say that you are watching this, right? And you are you have good intention, I'm assuming. And you are high vibe and you are someone who is trying to be the best version of yourself and you are spiritual and you manifest and you, you know, you're this genuine person, human being with a beautiful aura. There are people who are still fighting through this. So knowing that, don't be surprised if you start to see aspects of others where you're just like, are you serious? <laughs> like, you you had a choice in that and that's what you chose is to be a troll. Like, you chose to be negative. You chose to be toxic. You chose to be vengeful. You chose to be rude. You chose to say it that way. Why? Why? Right? If there's a difference in opinions, if there is a difference in, like, what we want, right? Every single human being on here is so different. We all have our different paths. There's no right or wrong. It's just what works for you. And if you see these energies butting heads, because there's going to be a lot of it, you're not going to see the very best of people all the time. And that can really defeat you, frustrate you, make you lose faith in humanity, make you lose faith in yourself and why you even you know, show up, why you even try to help. Don't let that get to you right? This is where, and this is the final things that I'll say before I let you guys go. This is where the North Node transiting through Aries really starts to show up as a leader. And even if you're quiet, quiet as a mouth, mouse, introverted, polite, lighthearted, sweet as pie, you can still be a leader through your actions. Do not let what others are saying and what others are doing and how malicious and evil they can be. There's some things that I see that I'm like, that person really felt the need to say that. And it has nothing to do with me. It has nothing to do with what they're making a comment on. It has everything to do with the discomfort that's happening within themselves. And they're projecting it onto this person. And it's sad. It's sad. And it's just so important that you don't absorb that. It's so important that you don't look at that and say the whole world is like this or that you start to mirror them really be the leader here north node transiting through aries you are the leader you can you you're you're making a whole shift too you're leading if you're born in this generation i believe that if you were born during this time you chose this there was a strategic plan for why you came into this world at this time every single one of us is leaders in our own way and sometimes being a leader and sometimes doing the right thing can be exhausting. That's why you need to take breaks. That's why you need community. That's why you need to be truthful, honest, talk about your feelings um, and and pace yourself, right? Especially with the vertex point, faded um, encounters, transiting through Virgo, there is a desire to want to show up and to help people, but make sure that you are not overly expressing yourself. You know what I mean? Like overly expel like expending yourself to people that you make sure that you are checking in with your energies and your vibes. Not every day is going to be a full day where you change the world, right? Or where you feel like you've changed the world. But you do make a difference, okay? So hang in there for the, for those of you guys that are going through it. Because I do want to say that I'm looking at these transits right now. Mercury directly opposing Uranus. Um, Venus directly opposing Jupiter. Ugh, fuck this one right here. Pardon my French. But Mars directly opposing Pluto. Um... It's a lot. It, it can really be heavy. It can really, really be heavy. Um, sun squaring off with Pluto. This can be, especially with Scorpio season, it can really make your inner skeletons in the closet kind of tumble out and make you feel a little too vulnerable, a little too defeated, a little too exhausted. Or it can make people want to push and not show the best version of themselves. Sometimes it's not you who is bringing this energy sometimes you're a victim sometimes you cross paths with someone who's just seriously an asshole or just says the the right thing that's wrong and it just really really throws you for a loop so and sticks with you don't allow it to stick with you you guys 
Put that barrier up, north node in Virgo. I'm sorry, north node in Aries. Chiron retrograde. Don't allow um, the negativity or the fluxiness of it, like the, the flip-flop of it all. You know, things that could pull you in, things that want to harmonize with you or align with you, but don't have good or high vibration. Don't allow yourself to sink and settle into them. Don't allow them to sink their teeth into you. Continue to move forward. Take breaks as needed. That also goes for how you talk to yourself. Okay? Keep in mind that everybody has their own paths and process and things that they are doing. Everybody has a story. Everyone has a battle. Everyone has their own path and their own purpose and their feelings and their own everything. So be give each other grace. All right? I'm going to head out. There is a full reading, exclusive reading, private reading for those of you guys that are subscribed to Bahati Love Notes. Go ahead and check that out. It's up for you now. For those of you guys that really benefit from tarot time, like I do, and my people, <laughs> Bahati Love Notes is there for you as well. Um, it's something similar to a Patreon. However, it's not Patreon. It's my little hub. You guys know I like to build my little hive and invite those who feel aligned and feel called to that it is there for you if you want to dive into tarot we have sacred circle tarot school that's available to you it's learn at your own pace over 70 hours of video content that's a lot of content for you to learn it goes deeper than just superficial tarot oh my god my friend just gave birth wow cool sorry cool oh my god <laughs> wow congratulations i just got a text message um Speaking of trines, right, and portals and things entering, that's so dope. <laughs> Welcome to the world, little one. I don't think you guys saw that text message. This is my iPad. Um, I don't think it's linked up like that. It might be on private mode. Anyway, um, yeah, uh, Sacred Circle Tarot School will teach you the tarot really, really deep. Do not, for those of you guys that are signed up for Sacred Circle, uh, don't skip those courses. Go through them one at a time. Uh, there is a lot of content, I know, but that just means that you'll be entertained. <laughs> you'll be learning and listening and receiving for like a year and a half or two years. <laughs> so I'll leave the links down below. Everyone else, thank you guys so much for being patient with me while I'm migrating through maternity, leave, and doing what I do. I'm sending you guys all of my love and take care of yourself and happy new moon in Scorpio. Like, wow, 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 wow. What are you guys doing for uh, Halloween? Does it feel like Halloween to you? Do you celebrate? Do you give out candy? Does it feel weird? Is this the most non-Halloween Halloween that's ever Halloweened? And do you guys have plans for Thanksgiving? Because I am so excited for Thanksgiving and Christmas this year. We're not giving out presents. We decided that we're not giving out presents this year as far as like gifts that you buy. We're gonna be making homemade, homemade presents Something similar to sourdough bread, but like not sourdough bread. Because <laughs> I don't, I love to take my time. I'm really going off on a tangent right now. I feel like I'm talking to my Bahati Love Notes group. But I love taking my time with baking and cooking. You guys know I stay in the kitchen. <laughs> like stay in the kitchen. But sourdough bread, like making that, it's just not for me. But I really, really respect it. And I love to eat it. I was The reason why I'm saying this is because I was thinking about making baskets for everyone this year, like our family and our friends, outside of the girls, meaning like my partner's nieces and our daughter, <laughs> we're, we're going to give them gifts um, this year. But as far as the adults, we are going to make like baskets of like pickled vegetables, pastries. <laughs> we're still figuring it out, but I'm like so excited to like hand bake goods for everyone and I hope that they like it I hope that they do but anyway that's my plan are you guys thinking about it am I thinking too soon I just I'm excited for the future so wanted to share that excitement with you guys I'm sending you all of my love in the meantime let me know what you're doing let me know what you're up to let me know how you feel and I'll talk to you guys later bye